Okay, so let's get started. And let's just once again do a very quick recap of what we've been doing. We're working with dampened simple harmonic motion, and we know that the differential equation that will describe this motion is given by the second derivative of x with respect to time, plus gamma times the first derivative of x, plus omega naught squared times x. And once again, uh, gamma and oops, gamma and omega naught squared, those are just two constants in the value of which depend on the physical characteristics of the system. Such as in the case of a mass and spring, it depends on the dampened coefficient, the mass of the block, and the stiffness of the spring. Now, we tried to solve this differential equation, and we got the characteristic equation r squared plus gamma r plus omega naught squared is equal to zero. And then we use the quadratic formula, and we found that r is equal to negative gamma over two plus or minus the square root of gamma squared over four minus omega naught squared. And we had said that the whole behavior like this root, and hence the whole behavior of the general solution and the motion of the actual system, all depends on this square root term right here. In particular, it depends on the relative size of gamma squared over four and omega naught squared. And we had found in the last video that when omega naught squared is greater than gamma squared over four, then this square root is, becomes imaginary and we get a complex exponential as a general solution. So hence involves a nice oscillation. Now let's take a look at another case. In this case, we're gonna call it the over damped, or the heavy damped. As the name implies, that's the case where the damping force dominates, and it's much greater than the restoring force. So as a result, gamma squared over four is gonna be much greater than omega naught squared. So what happens to this root? That means that this term here is greater than this term here, so when we subtract the two, we're gonna get a positive value. So we're gonna get a positive value under the square root, so this square root is going to be real. And since gamma is just a constant that doesn't depend on time, and since omega naught is a constant that doesn't depend on time, this whole entire square root will just be a constant. It'll just have one value. So to make life easy, we can do one quick substitution. We can say that alpha squared is equal to gamma squared over two, oops, sorry, over four, minus omega naught squared. And if we plug that in here, we get that our two roots, r, are equal to negative gamma over two, plus or minus alpha. So now that we have our two roots, we can find the general solution. And we'll find that x of t is equal to a constant a times e raised to one root, negative gamma over two, plus alpha times time, plus another undetermined coefficient times e raised to the negative gamma over two minus alpha times time. Now we can simplify it up a bit by factoring out this common exponential term, and we'll find that x of t is equal to e to the negative gamma over two times t times a e to the alpha t plus b e to the negative alpha t. And that's that, we found our general solution. Now, two very important points about this. The first is that gamma over two, alpha and negative alpha those are all real. So we're not working with complex exponentials at all. We're working with real exponential terms. And the other important thing is, since we, we defined alpha in this particular way, we're gonna find that the absolute value of gamma over two is going to be greater 
than the absolute value of alpha. And the reason why that's important is that means that this exponential out front is going to dominate. So this will describe an exponential decay. So let's plot this out and see what it actually looks like. Let's just draw our two axes. So if here is time and here is position, we'll find that this general solution for the overdamped case is going to look something like this. It's going to go down closer and closer to zero, and then it's going to like asymptotically reach zero. So we can see immediately that this case is significantly different from the lightly damped case. In the lightly damped case, we oscillated back and forth and the amplitude of our oscillations dec uh, decayed. Here, we're not even oscillating at all. We're just very, very slowly approaching back to our resting length. And let's try and think about this in physical terms to see like what's going on. So if we go back to our mass and spring, Here's our spring, here's our mass. We had it set up so the system was dampened by it being connected to a piston, which is in this one chamber filled with like this viscous fluid or whatnot. In the case of the overdamped simple harmonic motion, when we displace the spring, it's gonna try and move back to his resting length but it's going to lose all of its energy just pushing through this viscous liquid. So it, once when it reaches its resting length, it's not going to oscillate. It's not even going to go past it at all. It's just going to slowly decay down to zero. And that's overdamped simple harmonic motion. We're going to take a look at the very last case in the next video.